Hmm, hello. Can people hear me? Is the uh, first thing. Sorry, I, my, my microphone was playing up a bit. I know there's going to be a little bit of a delay. Let me know in the uh, in the chat if you can hear me and we can proceed. Oh, awesome, right. <laughs> That's a lot of yeses. Wow, people are enthusiastic today. Right, okay, so as the title says, we are going to be uh, looking at Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought for a little bit. Um, <laughs> that, that is something that people have been requesting, 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 but as the primary uh, content on the channel is, of course, historical, I don't want to try and for lack of a better term, clutter it up with um, gaming, but live stream is a good place to put that. So the format that we're going to do is uh, it's what it's just about half past eight in here in the UK. So I'm going to run uh, Adm Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought for maybe half an hour, forty-five minutes, and then we'll go over to a section of uh, Discord Q&A as we have done on past streams and then we'll go to live um, questions from the chat so if you do have a live question in the chat um, obviously I'm perfectly happy to answer it however please save it for when we're actually answering those questions because uh, as we found previously this whole um, uh, the scrolling uh, the scrolling chat with YouTube live streaming just seems to lose everything that's said after about 10-15 minutes. So if you ask something now, by the time I've come back to the, the chat channel um, with uh, Ultimate Admiral, then it probably will have disappeared and you'll just have to ask it again. So with that, let's see if we can... Where's my uh, little thing? Let's see if we can... Go over to Ultimate Admiral. So I really, really need to get a second screen to be perfectly honest, but there you go. Um, get a second screen to be oh, that's weird. I'm watching myself on my phone. Right, I'll stop that. Right, okay, that's just good. I'm just making sure it is actually streaming the picture. So what I'm going to do is, rather than go through gameplay and all this kind of uh, stuff that you've probably seen on numerous other videos, I might do that in the future, but for the minute, um, since we are primarily a Naval Historical Channel, I'm going to go into some comments on the game from a historical perspective, because there are lots of games like uh, this to a certain degree, but their realism generally leave something to be desired. So, um, let's choose an appropriate mission first where I can build a Dreadnought. No. Design a Dreadnought. Oh, there we go. Right. So, basically, what I intend to do for the first bit of this stream is I'm going to test it. Obviously, it is as here, Alpha 2 version 0.63, but we're going to test it to see if we can accurately recreate a uh, couple of historical warships before we go into one or two of the missions. Um, and if you're really lucky, I might take you into the last mission where I just designed this stupidly ridiculous ship that uh, would make Senator Tillman proud. So, designing a Dreadnought, let's go and see if we can recreate HMS Dreadnought herself. Um, I won't bother to do the battle part of it, but there you go. HMS Dreadnought, designed by Admiral Fisher, so of course we will go... Should we go with Enhanced Firepower or Mixed Technologies? What more accurately represents uh, Admiral Fisher? Hmm. Probably Maximize Firepower. This is Fisher, after all. So let's, uh, let's start with that. Loading constructor parts. I wonder what that means. Of course, it would be very embarrassing like, if uh, just after it updated it didn't work, but it appears to be doing so. Right. Let's see. Dreadnought 1 is the only one with the appropriate 
hull form and displacement limits, although we might try USS South Carolina after this. So, where are we? Our displacement. So, Dreadnought's deep load displacement was 21,000 tonnes, so let's do that. 21,000 tonne displacement. We have a speed of 21 knots, that'll take our weight down a bit. Range, well, we'll leave it at mediums, bulkhead standard. Oh, well, that's handy, they don't give you turbine tech with uh, firepower emphasis. Well, that's going to be a bit of a problem, isn't it? <laughs> Straight off the board, we can't actually build a fully accurate dreadnought because we can't get turbines. Oh, well, we'll go for the maximum possible. Um, and we can't do oil fire boilers? Okay, right, this is stupid. Let's go with mixed tech and see if we can get some of those. Right. Sorry about that. Let's go down back down to 21,000 tons. Twenty-one knots. We have turbines now, that's good. Semi-oil, as it was mixed propulsion. Uh, we'll leave the boilers and that for the minute. Let's see if we can just get the basic stuff right first. Early crop armor plate. Um, barbette light guns, standard armor scheme, right, standard, it was that greatly protected. Um, right, so standard bulkheads, one out of flood system, anti-torpedo system, had a little bit, double bottom, citadel, standard shell, standard shell, standard ammo, black powder, no, it's lidite, <laughs> hydraulic turrets, well, they tried electric, it didn't work, so let's leave it at that for the minute. Standard reloading. Rangefinder. Right, so. Armour. Up to 11 inches thick. But 4 inch extended belt. Then we've got our deck, which is historically 3 inches. Going down to, well, 0.75, so we'll call it 0.8. The conning tower is 11 inches, so that's fine. The turret armour is 12 inches. That's not going to affect anything until we put turrets on there. 3-inch uh, turret top. And we don't have any real casement secondaries, so... because that's all... I mean, the Dreadnought in particular, we don't have a particularly heavy uh, secondary armament. But we'll see how that goes. Because they're all, all the secondary... the 12-pounder secondaries on um, Dreadnought are all on the superstructure and the turret tops, they're not actually on the sides, so... Uh, shields. Well, we'll put it, take it down to one inch splinter protection. Apparently, we are belong to the Imperial Japanese Navy, though. So, well, whatever. Right. So that's our basics done. I'll stick an engine spoiler on there, and some auxiliary power. Right. So, let's get a main town. What have we got? What looks closest to Dreadnoughts? No. Advanced Tower 1 looks similar to Dreadnought. Unfortunately, will that allow us to do the actual historical way they put the mast around? Possibly. Well, let's find out. So. Secondary Tower... Just a nice basic one. Quite far back, we may move that later on. Uh, funnels, we need two funnels. Can we fit a small funnel? Yes, we can. So we can uh, barbecue our... We can barbecue our <laughs> the guys in the uh, past. And right, so that looking good so far. 
Um, now, bar bats. We don't need the. Uh, we need it. Yeah, we need one of those. And we need to put that at the back. Or do we? No, no, I don't think we do actually. Right. Okay. Sorry, I'm just checking the checking the plans in the book. Uh, no, the two rear guns are actually on the same main deck. So let's go. Centerline guns, 12 inch, two barrel. One forward. Yeah, we are going to have to move that tower. So uh, let's try there. stand to move that tower one bit more. Mm, no, I'm aware of that. Close enough. Uh, main guns. Side guns. 12 inch. I do wish there was a way for you to align those. Um, right, well, so far so good. We haven't gone over the weight limit. We're not going to put in any secondary guns. We do need to put in torpedo launchers, though. Is the dreadnought after all? So. Uh, well. We can put in four. Historically, dreadnought had five, but we ran out of mounts. So we're off, we're off by one torpedo so far. And then the secondary guns... Well, <laughs> there's a lot of these. There's 27 of these, and they are single barrel, three inch mounts. So, let's see, where can we put them? <laughs> Apparently we can't actually put them in many places. Well, let's see if we can fit 27 guns around here somewhere. Should be an interesting exercise. And of course, they were, but they were in pairs on the turret tops. Why on earth is my phone going off? Sorry, I'm just going to put this to silent because this is irritating me beyond all reason. Go away, be people on Facebook. I do not care for your opinions. Alright, so can we put guns on the turret tops? That's irritating. No, we cannot. Chalk that up to uh, historical inaccuracy then. Well, we can get some on there. That's eight. Oh, I spotted a possibility. Ten. This is obviously not the historically where they actually put the guns on the thing, but the, within the limits of the game, we're doing our best. One, two, five, six. So we've got 12. We've got half. Fourteen. Uh, Fourteen looks like the maximum we're going to be able to put on. So, we've kind of maybe recreated HMS Dreadnought. Um, not bad. The secondary gun placement could definitely use some work. I, can't, I cannot actually put the secondary guns on the turrets as well as historical, so that's a mark against it being historically accurate. But otherwise, the weight calculations are not actually doing too badly. Um, so, I'll switch over back to my cover picture a second. I can keep an eye on Build HMS by Jove. They don't have sales in this game, unfortunately. I can give something. Uh, well, we can try casement three inches. I mean, again, this is not historical, but doing casement three inch guns. Um, but we might... Ah! 
Okay, so apparently casements live on the superstructure now. Who knew? Okay. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so we've got 14 guns scattered around the ship at the minute. And we need 27. So unless my math is completely out, that means we need another 13. Um, okay, sorry, let's switch back to the appropriate screen. Right. Two, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. So that means we can get rid of... those. So we've got 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. And a short one gun and we can't do a center line mount somewhere. So I'm going to pronounce myself broadly happy that yes, you can in fact recreate HMS Dreadnought in this game. And it's currently saying that it has a displacement of 17,815 tons, which is only about 300 tons off the normal load of the actual Dreadnought. So... How much was one of these weigh? Six tons. So yeah, play around a little bit with the shell loadout and maybe if we give it some advanced hydraulic turrets. Yeah, this is pretty much spot on. I'm actually highly impressed. Um, we have recreated HMS Dreadnought. So let's give it a go with uh, USS South Carolina with the USA Dreadnought, shall we? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, okay, let's Find where's USS South Carolina? Okay, so we're going to have to uh, give ourselves a little bit of a come down in capability. 18.5 knots. Well, that's going to save us a lot of weight engine wise. Our displacement, thank you, Congress is, well, we'll start with a full load displacement of 17,600 tonnes. <laughs> Steam engines. We have vertical triple expansion. Coal firing. Uh, induced boilers. So the engine, crop armor steel, we do need barbettes this time, so standard barbettes, torpedo, double bottom standard bulkheads, anti-flood, citadel, standard shells, standard ammo, um, i go with bastards. Oh yeah, so maybe we could have pushed the uh, so it would have been large torpedoes. Could have pushed the tor the weight up a little bit on uh, the old dreadnought there, but still pretty useful. Um, armor. So this is going to be a bit interesting because the we've got a lot less displacement to play with, but the American ship is actually carrying a heavier armor belt. Twelve to eight inches. Then our decks are a bit thinner, 2.5. And our extended deck is 1. Conning tower is 12. Our turret faces are also 12. Where am I going? Wrong way. Back up the other way. Uh, the roof of our turret is 2.5. And the casements are actually hilariously thick. They're up to 10 inches thick on the so secondary. So no secondary guns on at the moment, so we're fine. Right. I wonder if they have cage masts. Ah, they do. How wonderful. And they only fit in one place. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. 
secondary tower. Well, we're not putting any guns there, so we don't need to worry about exactly where that's going. Two standard funnels. Apparently we do need to worry where that secondary tower is going. Maybe use the small one. That's the relocation of the main tower. Nope, nope. Okay, that's where we go. Okay, so that's a that's a problem. Using the historically accurate appearan appearing funnels, we can't actually make the funnels work. Not even with the enhanced ones. Okay, well, we're going to have to stick a... Well, the standard funnel is the one that actually looks like the historical cell... Uh, South Carolina funnel, but we're going to have to stick a small one in just for the sake of having the second funnel. Barbets, they've handily given us one there, and we'll put one in there. Uh, super firing centerline armament, the great American innovation, thank you very much. Makes life so much easier. And <laughs> we're already hilariously overweight. <sighs> Congress. What are we going to do with you? Uh, we could drop the range to low. That's not actually helping. And we haven't even got to the secondaries in the casemates yet. Um, so we have 22 3 inch casemate guns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that gives us 12. We'll short by another 10. So, secondaries. So, we need another ten. One, two, three, four. Whoa, what the heck? Stop it. Right, well, we have sufficient three inch secondaries. We now need a couple of very small. Secondaries, which I guess we can put there. Um, and we're running out of spaces to put secondaries. No. Nope. No. Okay. Can't fit quite as many small secondaries on there. And I've got a couple of torpedo tubes there. So, we are short on secondaries, we've already artificially shortened our range, and we are already over the congressionally mandated weight limit. How far up do we have to go? No, that's not helping. What can we do? We can drop the turrets down, maybe? Can't do that without being a historical... take out the torpedo defences. Right, so if we completely strip out the torpedo defences, we can kind of do a semi-historical USS North Carolina. Still need to find some spaces for some more of these. Can we get a few more in there? Over there we can't. Okay, so if we strip out the anti-torpedo defences completely, we can actually kind of get a historical-ish USS North Carolina. Although, of course, we couldn't actually fit the funnel in there either, which is annoying. I wonder how far up the food chain we have to go to get the uh, hull to lengthen. Wow. I don't think it actually lengthens. No, it doesn't. <laughs> okay, right, so that's a slight error in their game. 
So word of advice, if you ha if any of the devs are watching this at any point, you need to slightly stretch the hull of your obvious USS South Carolina hull so that you can actually fit the historical two funnels in there. So that's two battleships. Um, switch back to the other scene so I can take a quick look at some of these. Um, there's a question about the Krasny Crims. Um, as I said, I will try and get to those questions later on. I'm just going to put a word in notepad to remember that question, but obviously I can't actually see <laughs> the chat as it goes, but I will remember to uh, answer that. Yeah, I can drop range completely, but then, well, <laughs> that wouldn't be entirely historical, would it be? Um, all right, back into the game. So, okay, so battleships we've, dreadnoughts at least, we've kind of established we can create. Let's do we want to do battleship battle cruiser? Mm. Not really. They're they're basically dreadnoughts again. So have dreadnoughts. Enemy dreadnoughts. More numerous pre dreadnoughts. Um, yeah, let's let let's go with a. Um, la let's see if we can build a last generation pre dreadnought. That'll be interesting. I mean, so far it's not been doing too badly, aside from the South Carolina hull being just a fraction too short. The Dreadnought was pretty much bang on. Um, what have we got? Le Floating Hotel. Um, that. And slightly bigger, that. Um, which one should we... Oh, come on, yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> I don't even have to look at the chat, and I know people are going to try and insist I do the... Uh, a French pre dreadnought, right? Fine, whatever. <laughs> Let's bite the bullet. Old French pre well, I says old pre dreadnoughts. Tumble home design is obviously French. Let's have a look and see what we can find that vaguely matches this whole appearance because I'm pretty sure we're not going to be getting a Danton on this thing. Um, no, no. Let's so uh, let's let's go back through. French pre dreadnoughts until we find something that vaguely resembles this little dumpling. Mm, no. Maybe. Suffren kind of looks like it. No, this is getting really no. Yeah, I think Suffren is probably the closest in appearance and probably what they modelled this thing on. Right, so. <laughs> Gone all the way back to the uh, 19th century for this one. Uh, what have we got? Displacement 10,000 tons. Well, that we can actually put up. So let's go up to the full load displacement of just under 13,000 if we... Oh, we can't. Okay. Well, uh, another little thing to chalk up. Uh, inaccuracy. Again, Devs, if you're listening, if you're going to make a ship that looks like the Sufren, make sure that the thing has the displacement of the Sufren, because I think we're going to struggle putting together what is historically a 12,500 to 13,000 ton ship on 11,500 tons. But you never know. I mean, dropping the speed's probably going to do us a lot of favours. 17 knots. Uh, range, yeah, fine, short, bulk is few, whatever. Triple expand. Get turbines on a. No. Coal, yes, natural, yes. Uh, but at this point, we're looking at nickel steel armor. We don't need barbettes. It's going to be single hull, standard bulkheads. It still has a citadel. Standard shells. Well, we can't select anything more than that. Torpedoes, they also can't select the proper torpedoes. Um, electrical turrets, because the French managed to get those things working. Right, onto the armour. 11.8 inches of belt. I'm seeing that displacement go up quite worryingly. Um, Going to leave that 
as it is, because this doesn't have any figures for extended stuff. Dex 2.4. So we can play around with the extended armor if we need to, and I have a feeling we are going to need to. Um, 9.8 inches on the barbettes. Turrets 11.4. We'll play around with the rest of those values if, as I say, if we need to. Okay, we have one option for a front tower. Try to save weight over it out one. Yep, this is looking very French. And Rear Tower 1 with that platform is actually the more historically accurate looking. Right, now we see if we can fit a couple of funnels in this thing. Funnel with boats. Uh, just. I mean, that's nowhere near. So for, we should be really using the large one, but as you can see, we're not going to get two large ones in there, so... Whatever. Um... Two twin 12-inch guns. And we are already over the weight limit, and we don't have a single secondary. Well, this is going to end well, isn't it? Ten single 6.5-inch secondaries. I'll use 6-inch, because... Okay. I don't know where I'm going to put ten of these things, but never mind. Let's try our best. Get off that mountain point. Two. No. Nope. See if we can find any casements. It's eight. And we're out of space. Okay. Um, let's see if we can get any of the four inches in. Nope. Okay, and we're already well overweight. I mean, we're not quite overweight for the actual Sufran, but we are well overweight for uh, this. So, yeah, this pre-dreadnought build, I'm going to class as a fail. Um, let's try something slightly different. Uh, we've already established we can't get. Yeah, we can't. We're not going to get the um, turrets on turrets, so that rules out most of the uh, most of the American pre-dreadnoughts. And we've already done a British battleship, so let's go with something a little bit different. Let's try and build an Austro-Hungarian pre-dreadnought, the Redzetsky. And we'll. Uh, what should we do? We'll do. A, it's a. Well, it's a last gen pre dreadnought. So let's do battleship two hull for this one. Um. Think. Yeah, front tail one's the most historically accurate, but it's not exactly Austro-Hungarian, but it's close enough. Alright, funnels. Well, I think we've definitely got enough space. Oh, flip the stats. I'm put putting on superstructure before I've actually... Actually, that's pretty much dead on. 15,800 is our full load. Our speed is going to be 20.5. Range medium bulk gets few, fine, whatever. Triple E, natural boilers, we're back up to crap one. No barbettes, and. Uh, well, whatever, fine. Citadel. Uh, 
torpedoes. What torpedo size do we need? We need 18 inch torpedoes. We can't get them. Never mind. Okay, torpedoes are off the belt table then. Uh, belt timer. Oh, right, we're going to save a lot of money with uh, a lot of uh, displacement with this. I'm going down to battle cruiser grade belt thicknesses here. Uh, deck 1.9. Wow, these uh, these were fairly. Oh, too far. 9.8 main turret. Turret. Mm. Wait. Uh, 4.7 inch on the casements. Conning tower. 9.8. But extended bell, I'm going to put that down to four and a half for the minute. Right, so what can we do here? We need two pretty large funnels. Which I think are going to quite easily fit into this one. Yep, no problems there. Still got a fair bit of displacement to play with, so let's go for the guns. It's a pre-dreadnought, so this isn't exactly going to be surprising, is it? Uh... Don't. And then secondaries. So we need eight 9.4s. Call them side. Yeah, let's call them secondary side. Um... Sorry, I'm just checking what the actual secondary battery layout was. Ah, four twins, so we can go with... Where the heck are we going to put these? <laughs> I can't. Yeah, some parts are badly placed. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Um, well, that's, uh, that's a bit irritating. And we... Nope. No, so, okay. Pre-dreadnoughts with wing turrets are out of the question, it would appear. Yeah, you're not going to get that on Battleship 1 either. Well, that's irritating. Okay, so the pre-dreadnoughts need a bit of work, because we're, we're not getting the uh, the, sec the large secondary turrets on the sides of the older, of the uh, pre-dreadnoughts. So... Dreadnought score so far quite good. Pre-Dreadnought is 0 for 2. Uh, let's go for the cruiser. I'm just going to see if what's the time. 21.04, so we've gone down about half an hour. Oh, the cruiser form... I'm going to see, I want to see if we can get a uh, appropriate side turret, no, okay, so, uh, no, no, okay, right, we're going to forget that, so, cruiser's non-starter because we can't actually get we, I can't, we can't get that to work at all. Okay, so... Armoured Cruiser seems very limited. Armoured Cruiser seems to be limited to sort of 1900s and previous Armoured Cruiser. Pre-Dreadnought is a fail for any of the uh, later Pre-Dreadnoughts, again... So they seem the the pre dreadnought and armored cruiser design seem to be limited to what you could pull off in 1900 or earlier. Um, the later ones you can't, well, which is weird because the actual the secondary 
um, Dreadnought. The Dreadnought section is quite good. And now we're just going to be silly um, for a few minutes because, as you can see, I have done this mission before. Range doesn't matter in this. Bulkheads many, maximum. Uh, yeah, that's two. Well, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Oh, hang on, I just remembered something. <laughs> yes. Yes, I remembered correctly. This is going to be interesting, All right? Um. Oh, run out of money. <laughs> that's that's not nice, is it? Um Okay, fine. What am I going to have to get rid of? Um, bum, 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 bum. My weight's still alright. don't actually plan on being completed. I'm going to keep those. down to turbines. can just about afford it. We don't have any secondaries, but I don't think that's going to matter. Um, Let's just go pure citadel. 
Fine, I'll have a conning tower, whatever. Slightly over. What if I drop the... Uh, almost... What else can I do to drop costs? Uh, that's not involving any cost. Hmm, now that might let me get even more belt. <laughs> oh, let's put a six inch deck on there. Nope. New. Well, yeah. No secondaries, but... <laughs> uh, gonna need a lot more shells then, aren't we? Damn it. Um... Hmm. More armor, please. Not quite. No. Okay, well, there we go. Let's have a quick look at... As I was saying, dump all the bulkheads and flooding resistance and put it into armour. It's actually not a bad point. I say, I don't actually plan on being torpedoed. Um, let's drop that. Mm, that might let me get my 18 inch armour belt in. Yes, it does. Okay, well, I think that's probably about the best we're going to do for that one, so switch back out to I can uh, Right, so, well, I'll leave that there for the minute. If we've got some time later on, I'll take it through the actual mission. Um, that was stupid of me. I've, uh, if you'll excuse me for a minute, I've realised I've uh, managed to take myself into a live stream where I'm doing loads of talking without any drink. I shall be back in a moment. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Now I can actually talk again. That's useful. Apparently. Right. So. Where were we? Uh, dun, dun, dun. Right, okay, so there are a few questions that have built up, so I'm going to try and answer a few of those and then we'll get on to the Discord questions.
Uh, right, uh, so Yannick73 asked, is there any significant advantage dash necessity for a tumble home ship on Ironhold warships? By the way, congratulations on almost 90k subs. Well, was 90k? I was on 88 last time I checked, but thank you. Anyway, um, uh, I suppose 88 is nearly 90. Um, it's a significant advantage necessity for tumble home on Ironhold warships? Not really. Um, it depends what kind of Ironhold warship as well. Uh, if you're looking at say a broadside ironclad some of the earliest types there probably is a reasonable argument for it because it allows you to concentrate more weight low down which means heavier guns and more armor on the gun deck i think the the more you go towards uh well for center bat actually probably the best argument for tumble home on iron warships is the the center battery ironclads because that allows you to build out the big casement that you stick all your set all your main guns on and you end up with uh, you end up with um, a lot of, a clear field of fire fore and aft with much easier. So I'd say probably there the the broadside up there's a minimal advantage to it, and the once you get up to the heavy turreted ones, most of the advantage goes away in actual once the, you actually get to combat. So new. Um, Derp Tank asks, can you build things that aren't just Dreadnoughts? Yes, you can, but we established that the pre-Dreadnought and Armoured Cruiser ones, you can't actually get anything, uh, anything, uh, decent out of it. So yeah, I think uh, overall my opinion on um, on Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought seems to be that their Dreadnought design feature is pretty strong. Uh, their designs for anything smaller than that seem to be nearly there, but they're, they're kind of missing about a 5 to 10 year period of ship design. Um, So I'm just trying. To, I'm just trying to find some um, replays to put on in the background while I'm answering questions. Because nice as this picture is, I'm pretty sure people are going to get bored of it sooner or later. Where did I put my? Uh, there's the replays. And where are we? This PC. So I'll answer the question about the Krasny Krim in a second, once I've just remembered how to actually do the... Um... the play launch. Let's see if this works. loading so when it loads I'll switch to it
Oh yes, that doesn't work, does it? Sorry about this. Um, I just remembered there is a bug in the World of Warships replay system that has now got me stuck on a screen that I don't want to be on. Oh dear. This is this is not good. I'm stuck on the screen I don't want to be stuck on. Can't even see anything. Uh, Well, this turned out to be a spectacularly bad idea. Um, Oh dear, this is this is not good. Um, I can't get this screen to go away. This is overriding, oh for flip sake, this is even overriding the command prompt menu. This is stupid. Wargaming, if I find you. Right, sorry guys, I'm going to have to restart the stream because it looks like I'm going to have to restart my PC to get rid of this blasted thing. Which annoyingly also means I'm going to lose the uh, the Uber ship we built earlier. But I guess it's back, it'll be back to... Um, yeah, we'll be back. We'll, get, we'll go to answering questions because this is really irritating. Um, okay, well, give me five minutes and hopefully we'll be back online. 